What's up, y'all? We have another double bit mortise lock. These are pretty unusual, so I figured I'd do another video, even though I've done a video before on it uh, like a year ago or so, I think, and that is why we're doing another double bit mortise lock, and we're gonna see if it, I'm not even gonna go back and watch that video, but I'll put a link up here as I'm doing the uploading of this video, but a double bit mortise lock uses, uses two to uh, skeleton or bit, bit bit keys to unlock one to unlock the latch the other to do a deadbolt or and or to lock out the latch and we just got this in from a customer from somewhere in the united states and if you ever need locks repaired or keys made or anything like that send us an email se lock and key at gmail.com and uh, with pictures of said lock and then we'll try to see if we can do anything with it so anyway let's take it out of the box and see what we have the best kind of packing paper we can see how much uh hershey's candy is and wherever this person's from it's 2.99 Pretty much the same price as ours is. Hey, there we go. Look at this beautiful guy right there in the light. RHC, that is Reading Hardware Corporation or Company, one of the two. I'm not sure which, but we see the first problem. Oh, that is definitely not supposed to happen. The last one I did of these, the key was actually two different keys, but because one of them was a lot smaller keyhole, but these two keyholes look like the same size. Typically though, since it's a dual, dual lock, uh, they are different. So we're gonna have to take it apart and see, which obviously we have to do because of that problem right there. So let's get started with it. We are not going to waste a whole lot of time doing this. Remember, it is uh, looks like a right-hand door, or well, it could be left-hand door, end swing if it's end swing. Whatever the case is, the bevel goes that way. It's, uh, we were sent inner pictures of this, so this has already been apart. Remember when you're, oh, it's cracking right there. When you're screwing these back in, sometimes these screws are the same, but on some of the old, old guys, they they made these screws. So definitely be careful with them when you're screwing them back in, because if it doesn't go in easily, it's probably the screw for the other side. There we go. So a little mark right there. And uh, let's take a look at this dusty little guy. Why are we spring broken? Spring broken up here. So we are missing a spring, basically, that presses. In fact, you can see right there where it where it was, but there's a there's the rest of it. There's a spring that it pushes up on this, so that when this goes in, so if we were holding this up right here. And you push this in it's, it's pushing down and then you let it go and it springs back that is because this guy right here is broken and that's one piece of it and it goes all the way over just a simple flat spring really but quite necessary the rest of it nope get back the rest of it just needs to be cleaned up which, uh, just a spray down of lubricant really will do that. That's no big deal. Just make sure the integrity of all our other springs is good. Ooh, ooh, okay. And then, when this guy lifts up, looks like, actually, we could probably make the same key fit both. But what happens is, this does your deadlock. Put the key in, turn it, and it comes out just like that. Snap. 
And then if you use this one, uh, it's gonna pull the latch back open. Let's get a key for it first, or start a key, start the key process, and get some get some new steel going up there. Yeah, okay, found something from the last attempt at doing something that I did. So we'll see if this works. So no, it's just a little bit narrow. That may not work. So anyway, this would go kind of up here. Okay, we can take this off while we're working on it. Yeah, just like that, and then and just like that. So let's. So there you go. We just need to mark it and cut it right there. Uh, with some cutters that I don't have out here. But now I do. So we're gonna. Oops. We're just gonna measure and put that right about there. far in there. There we go. Okay, we got to get it past that doodad right there. All right, get, get down. Get down. Thank you. Thank you. Get down there. Troublesome, huh? Let's try that again. Underneath. Oh, I see this. I see what was in the way. This needs to go on the other side of that. Oof, 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 oof. In fact, we can actually... Oh, I don't want to do that. Hmm. Toughy. Okay, so you flip... Stay flipped up. Please. Yeah. Boom, just like that. Boom, nothing to it, right? Okay, you get, you get in here, just like you're supposed to. bit too long.
so we have, uh, I think we've got a little problem with the latch. See how it's got all this wear right there? Got this new spring in. I might actually switch this one out to a little bit wider. It can take a little bit wider spring. But, see how that stops right there? I think, I think we've got a little bend in the latch. So we're going to have to take that latch out to see. Oh, indeed, that would be a definite indeed. <laughs> Just a little bit of a bend in the latch. Flat is right there. going to go ahead and just cap this for its own safety for the time being while we work on this latch. Don't want other pieces to disappear and also going to look for maybe some wider metal. go horribly wrong. I think I'm gonna clamp this guy. It's got a swoop right here too. The word of the week has been swoop and there's definitely a little swoop right there. problem.
Let us see which one fits the best. Normally for these, I use the 5B, but I did get some 1Bs in. Uh, these are new, but it looks like that's, yeah, that's going to be the post. It's just a little bit too thick for that. So we can't use the 1Bs. Let's check out the 5. Perfect. Perfect height right there. It's like we got to trim the edges down, and we did have a ward in there. Uh, and then this looks like it definitely might end up being a different key too, which is usually the case. Let's go ahead and work on this guy first, and we'll go ahead and file that down. Doesn't, that is not going to take much, but let's see where our ward was on this because it's been over the weekend and I don't remember. Looks like that halfway right in that area. Let's go ahead and grab a pen and mark it. So we will have that referenced once we trim down the edge to somewhere, somewhere right in, somewhere right in this area. We'll just go, go straight across there. Okay, let's go ahead and file it down a little bit. We got it uh, what I call tight fit, so it's, it's just a little bit tight, but once we do the finish work on the key, it will smooth all that out. Now let's see, I think it's just a deep center cut. So once again, let's take this off. We're gonna have to take this off a few times because we're gonna have to clean this guy too. But let's see where we need to cut the key. Right there in the center. Two, tuck it up. You can see it's literally dead center. Again, we do have, this as an example, 
just cut cut that down if we really wanted to. But see how floppy that is? It's a smaller diameter. Better to go with the exact key for it. So uh, again, you could do this with uh, just a file down the middle, but we're just gonna use the slaughter since I have one. All right, bam, there in the middle. Probably at first come down to right about there. I don't wanna go too deep at first. So it definitely needs uh, cleaning. I think we've got it right now, just without it being cleaned up, it's hard to work. So we're, we're good right there. And we definitely need a second key. All right, for the middle one, we've already got one that was cut down for something else that I think should work just fine. Once we cut the board on the side of it for the inside cover, let's see. It's a little shallow, but I don't think it matters on this one, and I need to straighten that up. But I go in and looks like we can just put a notch right there at the tip straight out of it so let's see if it's wide enough it's definitely wide enough so yeah we may not even need the ward let's just cut that middle section out and it needs to be pretty deep I don't know let's see Oh, that is 
is gonna be right in the middle also. And it'll leave, yeah, there's plenty of blade there to catch what it needs to catch. So let's go over here and uh, throw our cut down the middle. Looks like we need to go a little bit wider. Straighten that up just a bit. Looks like it works to me. All right, now we get to clean it up. So we're gonna take it all apart and hose it down and basically put it back together. It's not in too bad a shape. Just needs a light dust up there looks like now of course i have plenty of video of it to refer to however if you were doing this on your own always take plenty of pictures before you do this
Uh, right, we did find a replacement, a little bit wider spring that will probably, seems like it'll work okay in here. So I'm gonna cut this the same length as I cut this guy. There, let's set this aside. And then put like a little, little bend in it there. Yep. like that. Let's put a little bit more of a bend in the top. And that area out. This should work okay. And uh, let's get this guy back together. Let's make sure this slid first. Remember we were having a problem with that sliding in and out so let's make sure nothing's wrong with it i think it was just dirty yep all right and this guy goes goes like that this guy i believe went like this yep just like just like that, but it needs to go, needs to go down a little bit further, looks like there. Hmm. Down all the way. Yep. And uh, then we had believe this guy comes next. This guy had some spring tension on it with, I believe it was the oh, wrong way. That was the wrong way. And that's why you take pictures, right? Um, so then this guy comes up here and over. Uh, actually, this may have been on that side. Yep, this was this was over here. And this is why you take pictures, y'all, because you kind of remember where all those little bends and stuff are in the springs so that's just like that and uh, then we had let's see this guy Comes up here And that, okay. Something like that. Right there, yep. And then we have that. And that. that that and, um, once again I believe it went I believe it went up
thing here. Bunch of little doodads. Now we're gonna find out if that spring is too wide. Good. Looks good. Nope, wrong one. Haha. <laughs> That's probably going to happen a lot. y'all let's tighten these guys down and see how it acts Everything went back together okay. We have our little key. So if we have a doorknob, which I don't have a doorknob out here, with doorknob, the latch is locked. Push that and it releases that little divot. Check that, locked, unlocked, locked. Unlocked, locked. So then you have to use your key to retract the latch. Boop, just like that, if it was locked. But we really wouldn't recommend that. So yeah, most time people would just use this, you know, open, close, open, close. And then if they wanted to lock the door, they would use their deadbolt key. Just like that. So anyway, there we go. Another double bit mortise lock, y'all. Phew. Phew. And uh, I guess that's it. I'm gonna go ahead and coat it down because I dried everything off. That was I was letting it dry so that the 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 lubricant would kind of soak into the metal and keep that keep that rust tamped down. But I am gonna open it one more time, coat it one more time before it goes back out to its owner. So if you have any questions. On this or any other antique uh, or mortise locks or whatever, like I said at the beginning of the video, you can post or uh, uh, send an email to us at selockandkey at gmail.com with pictures. And uh, if we can help you with it, let us know. Otherwise, thanks for watching this video, and we'll catch y'all next time.